Sports School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Roberto Tobin here for realagriculture.com. Today, just down near Chatham, Ontario, joined by Dale Cowan and John Nguyen. Gentlemen, thank you for taking the time. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about downforce on the corn planter. Um, not, I mean, it's, it's mid-March, late March here now. We're not too far away um, and when these corn planters are going to be rolling. Um, lots of things to think about that contribute to that nice even emergence, that nice picket fence stand. And one of the key ones, John, uh, Dale, downforce on the planter. Absolutely. You know, with this new technology, we're now actually able to measure things that are important to us, and we're finding out if we can maintain uniform planting depth by applying just the right amount of down pressure and keep those gauge wheels in contact with the ground, we're going to get that seeding depth that we're looking for to get that to early, even emergence. All right. Now, John, you, on this planter last year, used Delta Downforce. First year, how did it go? Um, we're in a big learning curve right yep. now. Um, we were happy with it. Uh, there's Definitely, we're not halfway there yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, we know our mistakes now, and we hope to uh, achieve some better emergence uh, through what we've done and other farmers talking to what, what their experiences were with it. And I think we're on the, the right path. Awesome. So what we're going to do here, Dale is going to talk specifically about downforce on the planter and some of the technical aspects. And then John is going to walk us through his experience last year. And again, give us a little bit more on what he's learned. So we'll have a good look at uh, downforce on the planter. Excellent. Here we go. So let's talk about downforce here. So some principles behind it. So you can see this uh, double disc opener here. That, that's the opener that creates the seed trench. And what you got back here is the gauge wheel that is used to control depth. So before we really get engage in the discussion, let's understand the factors that determine how much force it takes to achieve the planting depth that you want. So some of those factors are things like uh, soil texture, clay versus sand versus loam. It's gonna take more down pressure on the clay, maybe even on the sand sometimes. Uh, other factors would be uh, things like soil moisture. Uh, moist soil will have less uh, need for, pen uh, for heavy rate weight and uh, a dry soil may need more weight. Uh, the next factor uh, could be tillage. No till will need more down pressure. Uh, worked ground will be softer and won't need as much. But the, the big one and the final one is really speed. The faster you travel, the more downforce you're going to need to maintain your planting depth. So when we talk about uh, downforce, and we say, well, where's, where's the weight come from? Well, it comes from the dead mass weight of the row unit itself. So let's just say for easy figuring, this row unit weighs two, 300 pounds. And it takes 100 pounds to get this disc opener in the ground at the desired planting depth. So if it takes 100 pounds to get it in and it weighs 300 pounds, that means the gauge wheels are going to carry 200 pounds of weight. Okay, so that's kind of the principle what's really being measured. So based, depending on the corn planter, at this gauge wheel assembly, there's going to be an instrument put in here, either a pin or some sort of a mechanism to measure the force that the gauge wheels are experiencing. And uh, that's a, it usually has an instrumented uh, uh, pin or wire attached to it that goes up to the cab and that gets interpreted as weight. So when you're driving through the field, I gave you a static example of 300 pounds of dead weight, 100 pounds needed to get in the ground, gauge wheel carrying 200 pounds, the actual truth is it changes every second as you go through the field. So there's this constant demand and change for down pressure to be, to be uh, responded to. So when you're in the tractor and you see on your monitor on each row, you see what they call the, uh, the downforce margin, which is basically how much weight is the gauge wheel carrying. And so when you see the gauge wheel weight go up, that's telling you those are the soft areas in the field because not as much weight is needed to get the seat opener in the ground, so the gauge wheels are carrying most of the weight. Conversely, when you see your margin go down, that means your gauge wheels are carrying less weight. That means more weight is needed to achieve the seating depth and being applied to the double disc opener. So those two readings are very important to understand what's happening on each row unit with the planter in order to maintain your sample, or your seating depth rather. So again, an extreme example, let's just say your, your gauge wheel, uh, your margin went to zero, which means your gauge wheels aren't carrying any weight at all. At that point, you have no idea what your seating depth is, usually shallow. So that gives you the basic uh, premise behind it. So then when you're planting, there's two basic questions that come to mind. It's at what point do I add more weight? And at which point do I take weight off? So there's a couple other functions on the monitor in the cab that you want to pay attention to. So when it comes to adding weight, you're going to pay attention to a, to a function called good ride. And that's the percentage of time that the gauge wheels are in contact with the ground. 
So usually 98% or above is saying that 98% of the time my gauge wheels are carrying weight, which means I'm achieving my, my seating depth. But when you see that start to slip away, down to 95, 90, I've seen it go as low as 70%, that means I'm not maintaining consistent contact with the ground, which means my seating depth is varying, which means my emergence will vary. And also some of the other functions that happen is you're gonna to start to notice uh, if you've got that much uh, less contact, you're gonna have more movement, more noise, more bounce and more vibration in your seating unit, you're gonna start affecting your metering. You may start uh, throwing more doubles and gaps in your stand. And indeed, the best part about this technology is when you can actually map the performance indicators on this plan, or you can actually see a map of downforce margin in the field. And when it's low, you can actually find the doubles and gaps out in the field. So it does an amazing job of actually recording, recording the data. So that's how you uh, determine to, to add weight is looking at your good ride percentage. Percentage. And the other thing is, when do I take weight off? There's such a thing as having too much downforce, and that's usually when your margins are all at the high. So if you have a, a, a preset downforce and your margin is always near that preset maximum, and notice, what you'll notice in work ground, if you can see the tire tracks of your gauge wheels clearly looking out the window of the cab, that means you got too much down pressure. You don't require all that weight to achieve your seating depth, so you start taking it off. So you can start to reduce some of that down pressure until such a time your good ride starts to slip. So between the good ride and removing down pressure, you can get a nice balance on each row unit to achieve your seating depth without excessive downforce and without achieving a, a poor seed uh, soil contact when you got more bounce in the row. So that's kind of the basic principle behind what's, what's being measured and, and uh, with these monitors on these planters, on these row units. And uh, we can uh, actually look at uh, one of those maps and, and just show you uh, what happens uh, when you change your downforce settings in a field. All right, going to talk about this planter a little bit. Um, we purchased this planter about eight years ago, new. Um, we were running the normal spring down pressures. Uh, we have uh, quite a bit of variable soil from clay to blow sand to loam. And in my observations, we were noticing, or uh, my brother and I were noticing that the seed wasn't all at the same depth and it was running uh, not consecutive enough. And walking through the fields, the emergence was not even. So we discussed a bunch of issues that we could make it better and uh, in that process we went to with the Delta Downforce. Um, basically what it does is, is what, when these units are full, they'll have create more downforce so the, the unit will actually pick itself up. And also in those different soil types we want to maintain one speed. So in that process the planter will be planting all at the same. Uh, one thing we've learned in this uh, after one year was uh, we were trying to create too much downforce to uh, basically try to get a good ride and singulation. And in that process, we basically smeared our, we think we smeared our seed trench, not in every field, but in some instances it happened. So now basically what we're looking for is more or less trying to maintain a better uh, ground to uh, gauge wheel presence, like just to make sure that the, the margins are there, not looking all at singulation, but looking at uh, soil contact with the gauge wheel and not over uh, produce or over uh, giving it too much downforce to say. So uh, the first year was a big learning curve. Uh, we made some mistakes. Uh, so, you know, with our mistakes, we're hopefully uh, we'll get it better this year. I guess one of the most important things about downforce on a planter is the first thing you have to remember uh, before you get into the field or when you get in the field is to acquire that perfect seed depth. In our instance, I like to plant an inch and a half to two inches deep. And in our field conditions, you'll have, it's a 30 foot planter, so at this end you might be in the clay, and on that end you might be in the sand. But every unit should be exactly set the same. And to get that, that's the most important with the delta downforce, is to try to keep that seed depth evenly throughout the planter, because when you walk across that field, every corn plant should be coming up within a day of each other. The low ground, the sand, so that's one of the biggest important things that we think with the downforce is the seed depth. So John and I have talked about a lot of things here and uh, John's got a lot going on with his corn plant. He pulls in hydrus with, when he plants. So speed, consistent speed for him is important. But sometimes, you know, when, when you're looking at this uh, good ride map, uh, sometimes, you know, when you're in, it's usually a spot in the field where your good ride goes away. And if, it's, and if you can do it, uh, you know, scrub off a little speed, give that planter a chance to settle down, it might improve the good ride. Or you have the option with this unit to add some more downforce, 
because with auto steer your hands are kind of free you can add some more downforce in that, in that spot and still maintain the planter speed so um, John you know you, you've you've already mentioned that uh, what these units will do is as I said some parts of the planters in sand and clay doesn't matter how full or empty the hopper is and John likes to go to consistent speeds. What he's, what he's getting out of the delta downforce is this automatic adjustment row by row to maintain the right amount of down pressure to make sure that the seating depth is always consistent and that the gauge wheels are carrying enough weight for, for the seed. Uh, yeah, and also managing the system. Uh, uh, we're, we're a pretty tight knit family farm. We're our, uh, you know, the second generation, which is he's 21 years old. Him and his dad basically run the planner. Um, when we send it to the field, it's nice to know that, you know, they're, they're still learning. They're not making these, you know, mistakes out there. Once we set it, it should be able to take care of itself. Um, like I said, we're still in a big learning curve, but it's, it's just too much going on with this planter pulling in hydros for safety that, you know, they don't need to be adjusting stuff. So from the cab, as the auto steer is going, and, you, and they're really willing, these young guys are really willing to learn this new technology. And basically, one of our things on our farm is embrace new technology for our younger generation. And it seems to be working, and they're very interested in it. So Keeps guys like us on our toes, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I think, uh, you know, this monitor stuff is great, but what really puts value in it is when you understand what's going on in the cab in front of you, being able to learn your settings, understand when certain performance parameters are going away from you, what you need to do about it, when do I add more weight, when do I take weight off, uh, those are kind of the things. It, so it's responding to that uh, monitors is really what puts the value in the system. It's great technology, but we still need that human element in there to understand what's happening.